Hey, what's up guys? Going to do a new knife review. Uh, it's been a while since I had a knife review. Kind of got sidetracked with some other things. So, kicking off the new year with the uh, the regular old knife review that you guys are used to from me. And I have lots of different knives I want to review in the near future, but this one today is going to be on the Spyderco UKPK. Uh, UKPK stands for United Kingdom Pen Knife. And this knife was specifically designed for uh, obviously the UK, but as well as other countries around the world that uh, have a lot of um, specific laws against locking folding knives. <clears throat> now, from what I understand, a lot of these different countries, they have laws against carrying a fixed blade knife. And the whole concept behind this, although I think it's wrong, is it's just how it is. Um, once you have a knife that folds, I mean, once it actually opens up into a lock position, they consider a lock knife a fixed blade. So even though it's temporarily a fixed blade until the lock is disengaged and the knife is closed, it is in fact a fixed blade and therefore illegal. That's how it was explained to me by uh, actually more than one person who uh, lives over in the UK. Um, so the, uh, the way around that is of course having a slip joint type knife. Now the problem is that we have a lot of slip joints out there. I mean there's thousands of different slip joints. A very common one which I have here is the uh, Victorinox Soldier. This is an 08 model. It's changed quite a bit since then. Um, but, you know, this is a very common non-locking slip joint, okay? I'm sure a lot of people overseas have, have owned a lot of Victorinox knives. And the problem with uh, slip joints is that most slip joints from around the world um, are very traditional type knives, okay? A lot of people in different countries love the whole tactical knife look, you know, the one hand opening, convenient, uh, larger knives. And the issue with that is that there's not a whole lot of slip joints out there that have this type of appearance. It's kind of going the modern day, quote unquote, tactical style. Um, and when I say tactical, basically what I mean is a one hand operable knife. Okay, they can open and close with one hand. It's harder to do that with, a, with most standard traditional slip joints. Besides that, something as convenient as having a pocket clip makes it, again, tactical. So, anyway, um, so that's the whole concept behind the knife, okay? It does not lock, therefore it is illegal. That's L-E-G-A-L, uh, most places around the world. Now, of course, there's specific laws here and there, and sometimes it may be an issue, but generally speaking, they're perfectly fine pretty much everywhere. Now, what I love about Spyderco is their spec, I'm going to give you the specs on this knife in just a second here, because I like to have them towards the beginning. But I love, I love them because... They go down so specific in their, their details on the specifications of the knife. And one of my favorite things that they do on a lot of different models is the blade ends up being 15 sixteenths of an inch. In this case, this blade is 2, 2 inches, and 15 sixteenths of an inch. Now, why do they go down that specific? Well, first off, there's a lot of, a lot of states in the U.S. that uh, do not allow pocket knives that are larger than three inches, okay? And by law, when they say something, they don't actually write it like that. A lot of times the law, instead of saying it can't be larger than three inches, it says something along the lines of it has to be less than three inches. That means if you have a three inch blade, it's illegal because it's not less than three inches. <laughs> so their solution to that is to make it ridiculously, ridiculously close to three inches without actually being three inches. So that's hilarious to me. And I'm sure I don't have a pair of calipers. In fact, I should probably get electronic calipers for reviews in the future. But the measurement of a blade is from the highest point of the uh, the handle here to the very tip of the blade. Okay. And then, of course, Spyderco also um, gives plenty of other measurements. I'm not going to get that specific. You can go to their website if you want. Like, they always have the blade length and then the actual cutting length, which is interesting because the blade is not always completely sharp. You can see here the Ricasso underneath is not sharpened, but that is still the blade. But anyway, uh, specifications on this knife, as I mentioned before, the blade is 2 and 15 16 inches long. It is comprised of S30V stainless steel, and that relates to 74 millimeters. Now, of course, I'm going to give uh, different measurements because this knife does appeal to people all around the world, so it's only fitting that I give you know, metric as well as standard measurements, okay, so that everyone who might be interested in this knife, and it's probably going to appeal to people outside the U.S. more so than uh, than to people, you know, in the U.S. But anyway, um, the closed length here is 4 and 1 16 inches, which is 103 millimeters, okay, top to bottom. 
and of course overall open is 6 and 15 16 inches long which is 175 millimeters okay um, it's a very light knife 2.4 ounces or 69 grams um, it basically there's not a whole lot to this knife uh, you have the G10 handle scales, you have your blade, you have the uh, back portion here, which is your back spring, and a pocket clip, you know, and some hardware, some screws. So it's not really involved, and it's not very heavy. G10 is light in nature, and there's no liners on this whatsoever. If I open this up, I mean, it might be hard to see, but if I angle a little bit, it's just the G10. You know, there's not a whole lot going on there. Very simple, which equates to lightweight. Um, now... I want to talk a little bit about, well first let me get the blade away, or blade out of the way rather. Um, you have a full flat ground blade, like I said, S30V uh, stainless, which is preferred by many, including myself. Uh, it's a great performing blade. I love how Spyderco does the leaf, leaf shaped blades uh, for most of their knives. They're just, they're really, really a fantastic performing uh, blade style. Okay, you have a nice acute point for penetration. You have just a very slight belly here, makes for easy sharpening. Uh, the full flat ground blade is preferred by a lot because you have less resistance, okay, when you're cutting into material. Spyderco just does it right. And a lot of people ask me, you know, what's the fascination with Spyderco? Why aren't people making more videos on Benchmade and, and SOG and Kershaw and, you know, the list goes on and on and on. Well, those, a lot of companies make great knives. And there's awesome, awesome knives from every one of those companies. But generally speaking, Spydercos have such a big following and they have, they have such popularity here on YouTube as well as in the knife community as a whole because they just have such unique designs and they have very, very functional designs. A lot of people think that Spydercos are ugly. They're just, they're, they're, they don't look very good. And that's completely preference. I mean, when I first got into knives and I first started learning about Spyderco knives, I did feel the same. I thought they were kind of ugly because they were different. I was used to more of a, a traditional type looking knife and I found that um, not only do Spydercos in my opinion have the function but they also do have the form. A lot of the models are pretty sexy looking but that's just my opinion. Anyway, uh, in this knife specifically I want to focus a little mainly or more mainly on uh, the slip joint itself and, and how it works and opinions and that kind of thing. Uh, the first thing I want to tell you is that it is easily operable with one hand as you could see. Um, you don't have to worry about having two hands like a lot of other slip joints. You have the standard Spyderco opening hole here, which uh, assists in, uh, of course, manipulating that blade open and closed. Now, what I find the easiest way to close this is to get my regular saber grip, and I basically just push in my thumb to knock that off the, uh, the back spring. Once I release that tension, then I just change grips and then use the spider hole, or you can come up top to close the blade. Okay, it's very simple. Now the one thing I've noticed with this is that um, in closing it, the actual back spring, um, it's very different from, it's not, not traditional slip joint in the sense of the actual internal design and I, I don't have anything really to illustrate that, I, I don't want to take the knife apart at the moment, but what I'm trying to say is that once you basically push it like that and you get it off the uh, open position, it completely releases the tension. Okay, it's just freely moving. As opposed to a standard slip joint, I'm going to use this Victorinox Soldier as an example because it's very well known, Victorinox knives in general, is that once you start pushing this off the, the back spring, you can see there's constant tension. If I let go, it springs back open. It's a different design in how the back spring actually notch, notches against the tang of the blade on the inside of the handle. Okay, so with this, I have, I, have, I have to keep constant tension until about here. And then it kind of freely moves around. And then when you get towards the bottom here, you have to hold it. Otherwise, it's going to snap in. There, now there's tension on the reverse, pushing it in the knife. Or in the handles, rather. With the Spyderco, it's quite different. Once you break that off the plane, it's free to move. Okay? Now, there is a half stop. And the whole purpose of a half stop is so that when you're closing the knife... It doesn't want to spring close on you. It's just basically a stopping point so you can ch change your grips to really make sure this channel is completely clear so you don't cut yourself. That's the whole purpose of a half stop. But anyway, it takes a little bit more effort or a little bit more of the blade going in to actually have it want to snap in. So I'm almost at 10 minutes here. I'm going to take a quick little break and then uh, kind of recap and tell you a couple more things before the review's over. 
Okay, I figured I'd actually stop it there instead of having it run out on me. So anyway, so that's how the uh, the blade and the function of the knife is actually working. There's no lock on this. It's slip joint like, although it is uh, slightly different as far as design. Um, how the half stop works is basically on the outside of the tang of the blade. Um, there's just basically a little notch there. And I'm not sure if I can really show it here. If I get close, maybe I can. Well, you can I let it focus. You can kind of see it. Let me move it a little bit here. Basically just a little notch cut in there. So as it's rotating around, and it's going to be very hard to see, but that's basically how it works. So, um, yeah, so it's just a slip joint type knife, uh, which of course goes around all the, the laws of a uh, folding knife being illegal if it locks. So, construction here, like I said, it's very straightforward. You have the G10 scales, you have um, torque screws for the, or torque screw for the pivot, as well as for both body screws here. And the second body screw also uh, works in conjunction with the uh, pocket clip. Okay, obviously we have the wire clip here. I really, really like the wire clip. It's complete hit or miss. Some people don't like it. I don't know why. I prefer it. I wish every knife that I had had the wire clip. It's extremely easy to get in and out of your pocket. It keeps perfect tension. Um, I have found in the past, if you do bend these out, they're extremely hard to um, to bend back. Uh, they don't really keep the uh, original rigidity because of the fact there's less metal there. But if you're careful and if you don't snag your knife on something and really bend that out to an extreme, it won't be an issue. But obviously, if you're just careful, that will never be an issue. As you can see, it's completely enclosed design. It's not a flow-through design. Um, the actual back spring encloses the entire spine of the knife. It's completely smooth everywhere except for, of course, the edge where you don't want it to be smooth. You want it to be nice and sharp. And uh, there is some jipping on the back. I don't find that it's very functional, but you know, in most Spydercos, because of the blade sh uh, shape in general, you have an extreme thumb ramp, and it's really it's never an issue. It is never an issue for me to have good or bad jimping or even have it at all. It's just um, your thumb's not going anywhere. And I've mentioned this before. Even if your thumb does slip, you know, where, where's it going to go? It, what's the big deal? But, you know, in case you're interested, it's there. It's not very functional, but it doesn't matter. It helps a little bit. It's just not really, really grippy like some other models. Um, what I do like about this one is they put an oversized finger troll in here. Basically, again, so if you do accidentally bump the back of the knife or something, uh, your finger's there to kind of keep it from closing on your fingers. I mean, your finger's in the troll where it's not sharp. So it's going to be extremely hard for you to accidentally bump something, because it's the only time this knife's going to close when you don't want it to, is if you hit the spine on something. But if you have a normal grip on the knife and you hit the spine, it's going to take a lot of force to actually come down and move your finger out of the way so that it can actually cut you. So I like that feature, as well as just being extremely, extremely comfortable. That's the other thing. I don't think I've ever had a Spyderco knife, and I'm being completely honest here. I've never had a Spyderco that's been very uncomfortable. Uh, they're all, they just melt in your hands. The lines are just, they're perfect. There's a lot of attention to detail in ergonomics uh, in most Spyderco models. Um, but anyway, absolutely love the knife. Uh, value or price is $87.95 is the retail value um, or MSRP. Uh, I got this in a trade, so I did not purchase it. Although doing a quick little research, uh, it's a little bit harder to find this specific model. I didn't have a, lot, a whole lot to go by, but... Expect to pay less than $100 for it. Um, certainly, in most cases, you're going to pay less than uh, retail. So, I would say roughly $60 to $80. Really just depend on, on where you're buying it. But, uh, as far as the pocket clip, it is um, swappable for uh, left or right hand carry. It is not reversible. It is only a tip-up style carry on this knife. And it's fantastic. It's a very, very nice knife. Um... Like I said, it really it fits a niche in the knife world. A lot of the international viewers, you guys... Oh, my phone. Hang on a second. All right, I'm back. That was a uh, one of my viewers. He told me to wrap it up. It's taking too long. So, all right, I agree. <laughs> um, anyway, I was just saying it fits a perfect niche in the uh, cutlery uh, world in that um, a lot of foreign viewers like our, our new age type knives, they want to get away from the traditional type folders and, and this definitely um, fits that build. There's not a whole lot of knives out there that offer 
uh, all the same that this knife does and the fact that it does not lock. So there are a bunch of different versions of this. There's actually an Urban, which is a smaller version, a couple different blade styles, and of course different color variations as well as different handle materials. There's titanium, um, and there's also FRN versions of this knife. So anyway, um, real quick detail. Someone had uh, mentioned in another video what this little mark is right there on the blade and that's just the maker's mark okay a lot of times when you see these different markings um, it's the designer obviously the maker of this knife I'll let my camera focus there the um, the maker of the knife is Spyderco that's obvious but a lot of times you'll see other markings on there it's basically the designer the custom knife maker that helped design that specific knife for that company so that's what that's what that's about but anyway um, I like the knife quite a bit. I'm only trading because there's someone who I know who wants it more and they have something that I want and that's just kind of how it works. So uh, I have carried it, have used it a bunch since I got it. I do like it. Uh, that's why I figured it was finally time for a review here. But um, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video as always. I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. But before I go, let me just make a quick note. As you can see, I went back to the wood um, top. It is what it is, you know. I, I'm, I'll am i try different things as time goes on, but a lot of people prefer the wood for a background. Also, um, let me know how the details are working out with this video. Uh, I do not have it on macro mode, and I find that it's much easier as far as focusing. Now, when I bring it in really close, it still focuses as if it's in macro mode, but the problem, as you saw before, when I come out real fast, it takes a second to kind of register, but not a big deal. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.